So now that we can solve these equations, we want to look at some application problems and be able to parse down the sentence and actually build that equation that we can solve. So the first thing I want to talk about, have an example. If I drive at a speed of 60 miles per hour and I travel for one hour, how far have I driven? So I'm not slowing down for traffic or stopping at stoplights. Nothing, nothing safe. I'm being dangerous. 60 miles per hour straight for an hour, how far have I gone? 60 miles. And how did we figure that out? How do we get there? I was traveling at a rate of 60 miles per hour. And how long was I actually traveling for? One hour. So hour divided by hour canceled and we were left with 60 miles. So if I was traveling for two hours at this speed, how far would I have traveled? 120 miles. So my distance, how far I'm traveling, is found by multiplying what? My rate, how fast I'm going, times time, how long I'm actually traveling for. So any of these motion problems that deal with distance, rate, and time, that translation involves this distance formula, otherwise known as the dirt formula, because it reads out dirt. Okay. And we have equivalent forms of this relationship. So like our last example, I had information about rate and time. So figuring out the distance was pretty straightforward. I just have to multiply these two. But what about if I want to get R on its own? So if I'm trying to figure out the rate, what is that one equivalent to? I have to divide both sides by time. So let's say I was given the distance and the time, and I was trying to figure out rate. This version of that dirt formula is going to be helpful. And what's our last option? If I want time on its own, I'm dividing both sides by r, so distance divided by rate. So as we're solving these problems, the first thing that we want to discuss is which of these versions of the dirt formula is going to be the best for us. What's going to give us the advantage? So let's go ahead and look at one of these examples. Very first, the short fin Mako shark is known to have the fastest speed of all sharks. The sailfish have the fa has the fastest speed of all fish. The top speed recorded for a sailfish is approximately 25 miles per hour faster than the fastest speed of a mako shark. A sailfish can swim 14 miles in the same time that a mako shark can swim 9. We want to find the speed of each sea animal. So it's a lot of information, but we can parse it down as we go. So what are we being asked to solve for? That's our first question with these. I need to find the speed of each sea animal. So when I go to label and assign variables to my unknowns, I need to pick a variable and give it to an animal. And the order doesn't matter, but I am going to let M, let M be the Mako Sharks speed or rate. How fast they're going is the rate they're traveling at. And if that's true, then what can represent the sailfish? Sailfish's speed. So let's go back to that paragraph. I'll read that third line to you. The top speed recorded for a sailfish is or is equal to approximately 25 miles per hour faster than the mako. So the fail sailfish is 25 miles per hour faster than the mako. So how can we represent that as an expression? However fast the mako's going, my sailfish is going 25 more than that, 25 faster. Okay. And what other information do we have? We have information about their distances. Sailfish can swim 14 miles. So I'm going to label the distance of the sailfish, distance, subscript, S for sailfish. The distance of the sailfish is 14 miles. And the distance of the mako, how far can he travel? Nine. Nine miles. So, I have information about their rates, and I have information about the distances. 
Do we know anything about the times? So the second to last sentence, let me read that one to you again. A sailfish can swim 14 miles in the same time that a mako shark can swim nine. So I know that at these rates, I can spell, I swear, at these rates, their times are equivalent. So what do I know? Time of the sailfish is the same as the time as the mako. So as we look to pick from our dirt formula assortment, which one is going to be the most helpful? I need to set the times equal to each other, and I have information about the rate and distance. So my winner is going to be this very last version. Time is distance divided by rate. So let's start to fill in these pieces of information. How can I represent the time of the sailfish? It's going to be the distance of the sailfish divided by the rate of the sailfish. So what is the sailfish's distance? 14 miles is how far he's traveled. And his rate, how fast is the sailfish traveling? M plus 25. And I know those times are equal. So since time for S is given, time for M we need to build as well. So how far did the mako shark swim? What was his distance? Nine miles. And what was his rate? M. So we've built an equation that we can solve. Deals with rational expressions. Since we have fractions everywhere. Well, let's go ahead and start to solve. So since I have a proportion, one thing equal to another, we can cross multiply and be the same as multiplying by the LCD. So what do we get coming out of here? Got 14M, when I multiply, multiply bottom times the top over here, and other direction, 9 times M plus 25. Now that all of my variables are living upstairs, we can go ahead and start solving. So I've got 14M on the left, and I need to distribute to get rid of these parentheses. So I get 9M and 225 when we do that multiplication. And we need the M's together. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. I'll have 5 factors of M being equal to 225. And when we do that division, what do we get out? M is 45. So what unit should we put on M? What does M represent? Look back to the very beginning. M was the Mako shark's speed. So in this case, miles per hour are our units. And what were we asked to find? Find the speed of each sea animal. So I know the Mako is traveling at 45 miles per hour. So what does that mean for our sailfish? And we always want to write a sentence to sum up any kind of application problem. So the Mako travels at 45 miles per hour. And the sailfish at what? How many miles per hour? 25 more than the Mako. So we're looking at 70. 70 miles per hour. That is outrageous a giant fish. Go and Google, look at a picture of a sailfish, it's terrifying. Imagine that thing swimming by you at 70 miles per hour in the middle of the ocean. No thanks. I don't think I, I don't think I want to qualify for that. Okay. We can always check these answers as well. Plug our values back in to that proportion, that equation. Make sure that it holds true. So go ahead and take the next problem. Catherine, she's driving 20 miles per hour faster than her father, Gary. In the same time that Catherine travels 180 miles, her father travels 120. Find their speeds. So there's a lot of different ways that we can set up these kinds of problems. When you're assigning the variables, it doesn't matter who you start with, as long as the second one is changed, 
and according to how you've labeled your first. So I'm going to let G be Gary Speed. Gary Speed, since we're asked to solve for both of their speeds. And if that's true, if I let G be Gary Speed, then how do I represent Catherine's? Catherine's speed. So again, let me read you that first sentence. Catherine drives 20 miles per hour faster than her father, Gary. So however fast Gary's going, Catherine's going 20 miles an hour faster than that. What other piece do we know? In the same time. So I know that the time for Gary is the same as the time for Catherine. And what about their distances? So how far are they traveling? So Gary's distance. He went 120 miles. And Catherine's distance, how far did she go? 180. And it makes sense that she's going farther because they're traveling the same amount of time, but she's going faster. She's going faster than Gary. So which version of that DIRT formula do we want to stick with? I should use time is what? Distance divided by rate. Since I have info about the distance and the rate, and I know the times are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and solve. How do we build Gary's time? His distance divided by his rate. So Gary, how far did he go? 120 miles. And how fast was he going? G miles per hour. We'll deal with units later. And that's equal to Catherine's time. And how do we build hers? Her distance divided by her rate. So she traveled 180. And how fast was she going? G plus 20. Gary plus another 20 miles per hour. So again, we can multiply by the LCD. Since I have proportions, we can cross multiply. So I'm looking at 120 times G plus 20 is 180 G. So when we're solving, we're solving for Gary's speed. Then we can plug it back in and solve for Catherine's. And we need to start distributing to get rid of parentheses. So what are we looking at? We've got 120 G plus 2400 gives me 180 G. So I need to combine my G's together. I need them on the same side. So if I subtract 120 from both, I've got 2400 is 60 G. And I need G on its own, so we'll divide by 60. So Gary is going at 40 miles per hour. We want to put units on there. So what does that tell me about Catherine? She's going how fast? 60 miles per hour. 20 faster than um, what Gary's traveling. So in the very end, again, it's good to sum it up in a sentence. So Gary's speed is 40 miles per hour. Catherine's, Catherine's is 60 miles per hour. Someone who is not mathematically inclined should be able to look at your answer, talk about what happened.